So I've been really fortunate to be able to work with the Landscape Institute for quite a few years now. Um, we came across each other, I think, when I used to do some work on the countryside and um, I've always had an interest in getting green into urban centres. So going back quite a few years, um, I attended one of their conferences. And in fact, it was at the conference that Tim Lang jumped up and said, we'd better do something about the world because it's definitely going to hell in a handcart. And at that moment, I thought, yeah, maybe it is about time I brought what skills I've got to the table. And so that was the time that I invented Incredible Edible Tobledon, which is kind of what I'm speaking about today. It's about how people themselves, on a very small scale, at the human level, can bring changes into their own communities, can think about spaces around them and what they want in those spaces, and use food as their medium to show that they can change things. So right in the heart of a town or in front of a school or in front of a police station or whatever, along a canal, start to make them edible so that you can share them with people and put wonderful notices there and tell people you know, what they can pick, when, what's in season, what's not in season. And suddenly you start conversations and then conversations become you know, little groups of people who want to share their skills and you get people who then want to show you how to make pickles or whatever it might be or graft a tree and then eventually and you have to do it for a good few years you start to see people really increasing their demand for local food which means to say they start to define what a local economy looks like and suddenly simply by creating edible green spaces you've got a whole bottom-up approach to how you can build a kind of future it's pretty interesting i've always been a big fan of landscape architects because i think they've been a very modest profession you know, in days gone by, I used to be with a local authority and they were kind of like the quiet ones in the corner who didn't like to ruffle too many feathers. Now I'm pleased to say that because the world's woken up to the messages they've got to give, and particularly, I guess, since the Olympic Park and so on, we're starting to see them having a little bit more confidence and we're starting to see just how important their work is. So, you know, cities and communities and villages are where people live. And if they're all concrete and grey and horrible, then that's very depressing and that leads to all sorts of social ills that you know, aren't very helpful. Whereas the Landscape Institute, with its inspiration around what we can actually do in our urban centres, how we can bring green into our urban centres, how we can you know, connect with nature and the environment, starts to then create those pathways through to you know, happier futures for our children. So what I want to see is the work of the Landscape Institute becoming the norm. You know, I want to see what they're proposing and what I would back 200% to be embraced in government policies, on health, on, on education, you know, not just planning, because collectively they show a different future and it's the future we need.